morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Today, we're going to talk about how you can unleash your cash flow, um, specifically with Paystand and the BC Toolbox and that recipe for success. And during this webinar, we really encourage you to stay engaged, and we want this to be an interactive experience as well and a conversation. So please put any questions that you have into the Q&A inbox, and we will make sure that we, we tackle those and get them answered for you. And with that, I will hand it over to Ben. Awesome. Thank you so much. So, yep, like uh, was already stated, we're going to be talking about both the Business Central Toolbox as well as Paystand today. Not only how they both work individually, but how they can work together in order to improve your cash flow, increase insights, decrease transaction fees, and a slew of other things. So, without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, both of our speakers. So, you're going to have myself, Ben, with ERP Connect and the BC Toolbox. And David will introduce himself in a bit as he gets into his slides, but he's going to go over all of the great things that Paystand can do today. We'll also have a special guest. Uh, we've got Jeremy uh, up on the screen there from Concept Agritech. He'll be sharing a customer testimonial later uh, in the agenda. And with that, we can go through a few of the things that we'll be going over today. So we're gonna start with the why, why you should be using the BC Toolbox, why you should be using Paystand, uh, how you can use them together and how these things are going to bring you further success. Through that, we'll go over what both of the solutions individually uh, can do and how they can be used together in order to achieve this why. And in this live demo, we'll be going over three things specifically. We'll be going over our invoice and statement delivery tool. We'll be going over the pay stand integration. And we'll also be going over the financial dashboard so that you can kind of prove it, right? All the things that we're going to say today in terms of some numbers and statistics, how can you track those? We'll be using the financial dashboard in order to do so. I hinted at our customer testimonial earlier. Uh, again, Jeremy, thank you for being here today. Uh, he's one of our more recent uh, successes here, uh, implementing both the BC Toolbox and Paystand hand in hand, and he'll share his experience with that. And then finally, after the webinar, right, we're not only here to educate you, but hopefully you can get your hands on some of these tools. So we'll be going over the next steps. We'll go over the resources that you can utilize to be successful. And like was mentioned earlier, uh, I put Q&A at the end, but I highly encourage folks to just go ahead and ask those uh, in the chat or in the Q&A up top. David and I will intend um, and try our hardest to answer those as we go uh, and kind of fluidly go through that discussion. So with that, what is the Business Central Toolbox first to get started, right? So the Business Central Toolbox is a suite of 30 plus extensions, all available uh, on App Source currently. And the unique thing here is that they're all built natively into Business Central. So you don't have to leave Business Central to go see them. All of it is directly embedded into the user interface. And it's gonna include a slew of things, right? We're gonna have some dashboards and reports that we'll look at today. There's some productivity tools, there's some automation tools. Again, we'll show both sides of the house with the financial dashboard, as well as invoice and statement delivery, which I'd put more in that productivity and automation realm. Most of these are gonna be what I like to think of as gap fillers, right? So things that are gonna not only fill gaps in Business Central where there's certain functionality missing, or maybe it's just clunky, uh, but we're also gonna enhance uh, you know, various modules from out of the box BC, and we'll go over a few of those today. The other thing I like to point out is that our team, uh, even though we are an ISV, right, we are fully comprised of BC functional consultants, developers, and product managers. So not only do we know our products very well and where they can fit the gaps, but we've all been there and done that before when it comes to implementing, supporting, developing. So we also have a deep, deep understanding of Business Central and how it needs to work in practice. So quickly, I'll go over our solutions and I'll pass it over to David uh, to talk about Paystan and then jump into the live demo. A few of the things I'm gonna be going over today are how to automate, uh, automatically send invoices, credit memos, and payment receipt confirmations on posting or from a dashboard. Additionally, we'll also talk about how to send statements and reminders with invoice attachments, uh, two th things that are gonna be key in order to communicate with your clients, as well as get paid quicker, which will lead into the pay stand, pay now link, the different payment options, the automatic cash application, the auto pay, the collection plans, right? A ton of things that after we help facilitate getting those invoices and statements, you can now have your clients actually take action pay those invoices, uh, very flexible, eliminate these transaction fees. And then the, my favorite part is the auto application of those payments to the invoices once that's completed. So it's a true full life cycle. Then the last piece we'll look at is all the KPIs, the metrics, the dashboards, all the things you're gonna have at your fingertips to prove it, right? 
we're going to be talking about decreasing day sales outstanding. We're going to be talking uh, about reducing those bank fees, all of which we can report on from our financial dashboard to really bring it full circle. So with that, David, I think you're up next. I'll let you introduce yourself, go through a few slides about Paystand, and then we'll jump into the meat of it with the, the fun stuff, the live demo. So over to you. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Ben. Really appreciate yeah. the introduction. Uh, my name is David Gersten. I'm our senior manager of our emerging ecosystems here at Paystand. I oversee our Microsoft, Acumatic, and Sage practices. So real excited to uh, take you through our Paystand journey today. Uh, again, also thank you, Jeremy, for joining today. Looking forward to sharing your story. And we appreciate your trust as a customer and a partner of ours. Um, so, you know, we're here to talk about Paystand and how it relates to ERP Connect Consulting Solution. But I just want to take a step back and tell you a little bit of kind of about how Paystand started. So what, what basically, if you think about when a revenue of a company, uh, when a company is growing, their revenue increases. And, and what we found was companies were being penalized uh, for that growth whether or not it was uh, convenience fees going up, transaction fees going up, manual labor going up, day sales and standing going up, all of these problems that attribute to a company that's growing. Not a bad thing when your company's growing, but why should you actually pay more for that? So we came up with a model, we flipped it upside down and we came up with a model that basically is payments as a service. Now, instead of chasing transaction fees, we're looking at a flat predictable spend to collect your AR based on the revenue that you have. Enable to, enable, enable, <laughs> to be able to do this, uh, we basically had to come up with a new technology. So built from the ground up, uh, we moved off of legacy payment rails, ACH and credit cards, and we offered now what's called the Paystand B2B network. Um, we are also still a one-stop shop. So ACH, credit cards, and our bank-to-bank -bank network uh, is still an option for customers to look at collecting their revenue. With our technology that I'll show you in just a little bit, um, we really find that our customers reduce DSO by 62%. You know, they eliminate transaction fees by 51% and really ultimately automate that AR process. Um, we are the only system in the marketplace out there that actually allows a CFO or a company, an owner or executives in a company use levers inside of our solution to actually control the profitability of their solution, of their business. Very impressive, um, and it's really exciting to see this type of thing. Let me just point out one more thing with how we're different from traditional AR um, uh, solutions. There's tons of them out there. You go through the conference, we're gonna be at Community Summit in, in the fall. You know, you can throw a rock and hit, you know, 25 different AR providers. What is different about Paystand? We mentioned it earlier. You know, we're a SaaS model, we're fixed monthly cost, and we're low to zero transaction fees. The other providers out there, they make money on their transaction fees. That's what they're making money. It's typically a low, low monthly fixed co you know, uh, cost, and then a variable transaction fees that are very expensive and you know, unpredictable. We also have, like I said, multiple options. We're enabling digital payments. We're providing the merchants options to their customers, multiple payment options, B2B payment network, ACH, credit cards. We have a fee-less bank-to-bank network. It doesn't cost the customer or the merchant any money to use that system. It literally can provide a method to reduce or eliminate credit card transaction fees by using convenience fees that we encourage the customer, the merchant to use with our customers to help drive payer behavior. We're easy to use, click to pay, I'll show you how that works. We show you, we'll show you exactly how we go ahead and do cash application. Um, we do do deposit reconciliation. I'm not gonna have time in today's demo to show you that, um, but we are the only solution that takes you all the way from um, invoice or sales order all the way to bank deposit reconciliation of the payments that are made through the Paystand Bank Network. Um, and basically, we really incentivize the merchants to use different methods with their customers to help drive this type of behavior. So real excited. I think it's time to go ahead and get into it, um, if I'm not mistaken. 
so let's go ahead and do some screen sharing and changes. Uh, give me one sec. You should be able to see Business Central at this time. I, um, I was testing out the system. It looked seemed like it was a little slow this morning. Um, we got to wake up the Business Central, you know, cloud environment. But uh, let's see how we operate today. So, you know, everyone should see for this familiar. We are a SaaS focus on the SaaS based Microsoft uh, Business Central environments. Just going to go ahead and just create a quick uh, sales invoice for us. Um, we do also tie to sales orders. Um, which many customers will go ahead and take payments against the sales order as well. So we'll go ahead and select, um, I'm going to go do some furniture shopping real fast. Um, blue is one of my favorite colors, so I'll choose the blue swivel chair. We'll get a couple of these so I could kind of show you how this works. Um, we operate on a posted invoice model. So we'll go ahead and post this invoice. Um, and uh, what you'll see actually is as that invoice is actually being posted, it's also syncing to the Paystand dashboard, and I'll show you that in just a second. Once that invoice is posted, there's a couple of different methods of uh, delivery of that invoice. Uh, Paystand dashboard will go ahead and uh, take on that based on the collection plan that you've assigned to it. Uh, we can use the invoice and statement delivery solution by uh, uh, ERP Connect, um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but the other way you can do it is we, we, we leverage the template mode inside of uh, Business Central. So we'll go ahead and just go in, show you the email. Um, I'll go ahead and use a template. We have open statements or single invoice reminders. I'll go ahead and just show you an invoice reminder. This is a template of what the customer will see. It's branded. We can put your logo. We uh, bring in the customer number, customer name. We bring in the invoice number, the amount due. And then we do a pay now link by me. It could be a graphic, it could be a, an image, it could be whatever you want. It's really just a hyperlink to our payment um, checkout experience. So we'll go ahead and send that email out. Um, and as you can see, what I'll show you real fast is if we look at invoice 103463, if we go to our uh, Paystand dashboard, and let me just go ahead and refresh this, you should see that pay, invoice 10, I'm sorry, there it is. Uh, 103463 has already synced for the $380.20. And at this point, you could do a lot of different things. And what I want to show you, first of all, is our collection plans. Um, when an invoice is created in, in, in Business Central and it syncs to our dashboard, it gets assigned based on the customer uh, that the merchant has decided what type of collection plan do they want to be. It can be as simple as as soon as the invoice syncs to Paystand, go ahead and send that invoice out to the customer, and the customer will go ahead and click on the Pay Now link and, and pay that. Um, and then maybe there's a follow up if, if it doesn't you know, get paid and then five days before due date, uh, on the due date, we send out these automated reminders, basically setting it and forgetting it. You can post an invoice, it syncs the Paystand dashboard, gets assigned to a, uh, a payments plan, and all of a sudden goes and, and goes through the collections process. Um, you could also select based on your customers. Uh, you as merchants know your customers really well. You know if they're on-time payers, you know if they're late payers, you know, maybe you want to go ahead and, uh, you know, let them know 10 days before instead of five days before because they tend to be a late payer. Again, this can be set up at the customer, at the company level. Very cool that you can do that. So as you can see at the company level, there's a lot of different things you can do inside the Paystand dashboard. You can go ahead and uh, select auto pay. This is when we store the payment method so that when the due date comes on, Whatever invoice is there, the customer will go ahead and get a reminder, says, hey, you know, one day or three days before you get to set that, it's a totally variable uh, number that allows you to send a reminder that says, hey, Mr. Customer, you have this payment method stored on file. We're going to go ahead and charge that. And again, this could be the bank to bank network. This could be an ACH payment or it can be the credit card method. Uh, we also can set a customer up by collection plans, like I said, and we could also send them open state invoice reminders. 
So there's a lot that you can do at the customer level as well as the invoice level. If you look at the invoice level that we were talking about, let me get back to that receivable real fast. Give me one sec. Bring up the receivables for this customer. And you can actually, when sometimes someone calls in and they want to pay over the phone, you have that ability to go ahead and just collect that information. You can set it to auto pay. You can set it to collections. You can do a pay now, which allows the customer to go ahead and tell you which credit card or which payment method they want to pay. But if they also want to change their method, you can actually go ahead and capture a token at that point so they can go ahead and pay that method over the phone. Uh, you could also send them reminders of that. So real fast, that's a, a lot about the Paystamp dashboard, but let me show you kind of what happened in that email that came through that I sent earlier. So we went ahead and got a PayNow link, and I'll go ahead and show you our very unique Paystamp dashboard. Give me one sec. One more time. Oh, it was working this morning. Try it one more time. Live demos are always fun, aren't they? Let's try it this way. And no, let me do this. I've got to go ahead and go this way. We'll take you out to the PayStand dashboard uh, through this method. So as you select the PayNow link, you go ahead and get a unique payment experience. And this is really our differentiator between any other providers. We talked about that free bank-to-bank -bank network. I'll go ahead and show you how that happens in just a moment. Um, we present the payment method up front. It's front and center. Um, you have a limited amount of banks that are shown, but as we uh, partner with over 99% of all banks in the United States, we also show that by using this payment method, it is you're basically saving you $30.02. So if you think about that, uh, you've got the um, free savings for no for using the bank-to-bank -bank network. If the customer chooses to use credit card, we're going ahead and showing them that it, there is a fee to use the credit card. So let me show you real fast kind of how you do this. Um, and I'll need to just remember, 3252 is my invoice. So we'll go ahead and log in real fast so you can kind of see the process. Um, what's really cool about this is that based on the bank that the customer is using, um, we're going to surface the credentials, the, the multi-factor authentication, whatever it is. So I'm showing you Bank of America. You know, there's some passwords. You've got uh, different uh, methods of logging in. It might be an SMS text. Whatever the bank uses, we'll go ahead and surface that. You select your bank account. Once you've done this once, this information is stored as a customer. So it's real easy for the customers to go back. But let me show you real fast one thing. Um, this is really our second key differentiator. We are also verifying funds in the bank account. So no longer can a customer pay with only $10 in their account, a $1,000 invoice through ACH. Technically, you can do that. But when it hits the merchant, it bounces. It's insufficient. There's chargebacks. There's disputes. There's all sorts of things. In our solution, because of the way we are verifying the bank account with our proprietary login information, um, we have the ability to verify the funds and prevent the customer from using an account that doesn't have funds. So as you can see, this invoice is $1,000.80. We can only use this account that has $1,200. So I'll go ahead and process this. We'll go ahead and keep going through the system and paying this through. And we'll go ahead and continue processing this. And this should process. Give me one sec. It's going through. And again, we are now. So invoice number 3252 is our ending. Let me go back into um, let me go back into Business Central and show you the magic of what just happened. So if we go back to we speak Wi-Fi, the account and we look at their ledger entries. This was a pretty old um, entry, so let me just try to find it. It was 34.52, if I'm not mistaken. Was that what I said? Let me just, 32.52. Okay, we're gonna keep going down, 32.52, uh, 32.52. It was a pretty old invoice that I just paid. 
Um, there we go. Invoice number 3252. Uh, we'll go ahead and show that it was originally for $1,000.80, and the payment was made, and there's no remaining amount due, if you can see right here in this line. And then at the top, you'll see that the payment was done instantaneously to the Paystamp bank account. It was paid, and there's no more dollars left. So at the end of the day, you know, what I've shown you is create an invoice, send it very easily to your customer through several different ways. You could select the invoice template, you could use invoice statement delivery, you can use the Paystand dashboard and the collection plans. You've got auto pay, you've got uh, customer cash application, uh, stored pay payment methods, and uh, that's how you go ahead and if you use all that, in those levers, uh, passing the convenience fees and using the free bank to bank network, um, you'll ultimately reduce your DSO, get paid faster, and imagine the things that you can do with that type of cash on hand. So let me go ahead and throw it back to you, Ben. Awesome. Thank you, David. Really appreciate that. That was great. I'm going to share my screen here. Give me one second. Let me know when you can see uh, Business Central popping up there. Should be my main screen. All good to go there, David. Cool. So one of the other things, um, David, I know you're trying to do that that email piece in the demo. I actually have a live email uh, of somebody using Paystand. So I figured I'd just show that as well, because I think one of the important things is to highlight the customer's experience, right? There's all these things on the back end that us as tech people might find cool. But the reason you're going to buy this as a customer, right, is to make it seamless. So I've got this email that goes out from uh, invoice and statement delivery, right? David showed kind of the the more manual way, I'll call it, from out-of-box business central, which is why we created invoice and statement delivery to automate these types of messages. But the beauty of it is when you click this pay now link, let me pop open over here what that's going to look like. So if I want to go pay this guy right now and let me, my screen resolution doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. Make that a little bit larger. I can now see that it shows me my invoice number shows me the amount due. Uh, I can pay by just simply connecting my bank or I can select one of the other uh, methods, ACH or credit card, right? So ACH, just gonna ask you for your banking information. Uh, and then if you wanted to go um, do, just change that to credit card, of course you can do the standard credit card piece. So not only with what David was showing, you can you know take it over the phone, all that kind of stuff. But my favorite part of it is the ability to self-serve, right? You just send the invoices out, your client or your customer um, has the ability now to uh, take that and kind of just run with it, right? So not only is it gonna do the things David talked about, but from a customer service standpoint, right? You might also be able to just reduce the amount of calls you're getting in general um, simply with those those self-serve pieces, right? Which is kind of the way the, the world's moving today. Everybody kind of just wants to knock things out. People don't wanna call people on the phone and sit on hold and stuff like that, right? So if they have that option to go pay themselves, um, I think they will, right? And we've seen it time and time again with our clients. And I know Jeremy's going to share his experience, but uh, I'm sure it's similar. So and, now and again, last, uh, you check out that uh, halftime rental uh, uh, branding also. That branding, was something, yeah. you know, each customer gets their own branding experience, logo, color. It doesn't look like Paystand. You know, my demo shows the Paystand colors and stuff because it's our template. Um, but that was a great example of the, the branding that the customer, so they're really paying the merchant, they're, it's not like they're paying pay stand. Exactly. Yep. Now, good call out. So, with that, right now, how can we make that even easier, right? How can we get invoices to clients easier? How can we get statements to clients easier? How can we do it all from Business Central? And all that magic is going to happen through invoice and statement delivery. So, I'm going to show the setup for like a minute just because I know that's not the, the purpose of the demo, but this is going to solve some key things, right? The first being batch invoicing, right? If we're going to batch invoice or batch send statements, it's very manual in Business Central. It's it's not difficult to do, but it's mundane and time consuming, right? So this is going to make it faster. It's going to cut down on that invoice processing time like we talked about earlier. And ultimately, it's going to keep your customers in the loop, right? The more your customers are in the loop, the more they're keeping you top of mind, which also means that better communication is going to get them to be paying you quicker, right? If somebody sends me an invoice and I shove it off to a folder, and I don't look at it, uh, it's just going to be at the bottom of my to-do list, right? But if Jeremy sends me a message and says, hey, Ben, remember that invoice? I'm not ignoring it on purpose. I just have more important things to do than pay invoices, right? But if if those uh, communications are system-driven, 
it's going to keep you top of mind and get you paid quicker. And then again, we'll talk about some of the other uh, the other pieces. Uh, I see a question: How long does it take to get both of these tools implemented and work together? So from a invoice and statement delivery standpoint, that's a great segue into this setup screen. Invoice and statement delivery takes under two hours to set up, right? A lot of this is going to be um, similar between invoices and statements and pay reminders and things like that. And then David, I don't know what your stock time is for um, pay stand. I know there's, you know, there's more things that you have to go through like underwriting and stuff like that. But from what I've seen, our, it's still, our it's process still super take, quick. yeah, our process takes about 20 to 30 days post signature. Um, our underwriting process usually takes about one to two business days, unlike other. There's some other players that can take a couple of weeks, but it's real simple. Once we get signature, uh, we could be up and running between 20 to 30 days. Awesome. That's great. So I'm going to update this test email just so I can get all of those emails. I like to call this out. If you do download the trial, you don't have to go update every customer's um, email address or anything like that, right? You can just do this and it's going to override everyone so that you can literally download it into production, update that and start sending kind of live tests of these invoices and the statements. Uh, we have this auto email feature. If you want to get your AR aging in your inbox every single day, you can simply fill this out with what email you want it to go to. And then we have a job queue that you turn on and it's going to send you a high level summary of what that AR aging is going to look like in this template. Then it's also going to attach an Excel spreadsheet with all of your customers details, right? And the aging buckets that uh, those sit in. I know Jeremy uses that one. Uh, his team uses that one as well. And then when you get down into the meat of it, this is the sending of the documents to your clients and your customers and things like that. The most important thing I want to call out as we get into the demo is this email upon posting, right? So immediately when you post that sales order, or that sales invoice, you don't have to go through those dialogue boxes that David showed, right? That that out of box stuff that seems to, again, just be kind of time consuming. You probably just click through it because then messages never change. What we do here is we enable you to create this email body. We have these kind of, we'll call them wild cards, right? So Two is going to be the invoice number. Three is going to be the client name. Six is going to be the amount due. These things are just automatically going to populate in your email, regardless of who you send that email to. So again, you're not messing with the templates. You set it and forget it, and you're just able to run with it. You can throw the links in there. I got that pay stand link in there for today's demo um, because we also use it. So it's a, it's a live, uh, real living, breathing thing that we're going to be using in our body. But Again, simple setup, it's gonna look the same on service invoices, credit memos, right? So we don't have to go through all of that. The only different pieces are our statements and our past due reminders and recurring documents. If you think about it, those invoices you're sending on post, well, there's nothing posting to a statement, right? So these are a little different. We're either gonna do these from a dashboard or a job queue. So think of those as your three options. You can send on post for anything. You can uh, do it from the dashboard for all these documents, or you could just set it up on a job queue, right? I don't want to think about my statements, just send everybody a statement that has a balance on the last day of every month or the first day of every month, right? You can do that from a job queue. And then the past due reminders, you would set a cadence, in this case, zero days, seven days. What this is going to say is on the due date, send them a reminder, hey, you know, this assumes the document's still open. It's not going to do this for closed documents. That's part of the trigger. But for any documents that still have a remaining amount where the due date's today, send them a reminder. Then every seven days after that, it's going to continuously send them a weekly reminder. It's going to have that you know, template that we define. So again, you can have the pay links and things like that. Uh, and it's going to include the invoice attachments, which I think is the most important piece here in one of what I've seen as the limitations of Business Central when sending statements, right? If I pulled the crowd of what the number one question is you get when you send out statements, it's probably people emailing you back saying, I never got that invoice. Can you send the email copy? Now I got to log back in. I got to print it out. I got to send it, all that kind of stuff. Those days are over, right? You just send the statement and this solves that problem. It's including all the attachments. So now if they need to make those payments, they can do so real time. Last piece is these recurring documents, right? So if you're using the copy document function or the recurring sales line function or anything like that, it's probably, again, time consuming. I think you see the common theme here, right? We're trying to cut down on that. What recurring documents can do is allow you to set up these various um, templates. And I'll show one of those real quick as we jump into the demo. And by setting those templates up, uh, it's going to look exactly like a sales order or sales invoice that you probably already know and love. So if I go into this recurring sales invoice, you'll notice the headers, the lines, all that kind of stuff looks the same. But we add these recurring settings. So how often do you want that document to be generated? Do you want to create it and leave it open, create and release it, create it and automatically post it, right? If you create and post and you have send on post turned on, not only are you creating the recurring document, but that email is also going out at the same time, right? 
when do you want it to occur? Think of that as the document date. When do you want it to post? Of course, that's going to be the posting date. Do you want it to expire? Maybe it's only a year contract. It'll mark it as expired. Maybe put it on hold, things like that, right? And then if I come down into my lines here, maybe I want, you know, cons uh, monthly consulting fee that I've got in my lines here. Let's come out to the end. And instead of having this, you know, old manual date that you're probably using in the copy document or those recurring sales lines, I can simply just put, you know, three, four. And what that's going to do is it's going to replace the three with the month and the four with the year. So now it's going to say monthly consulting fees for August of 2024, right? You don't have to go manually update all of those documents. And then you can just start to generate them, right? Uh, we've got a dashboard that shows everything that needs to be generated with a simple click of a button. All of that is going to be automatically generated for you uh, and ready to go, right? So with that, I'm going to show a quick sales order and our first option, which is send on post, right? So in this, you're not going to see me click any of those templates. You're not going to see me really doing anything like that. I'm just going to go through the standard here for a sales order. So I got some customer pop-up notes coming from another tool. Uh, we've got an advanced notifications tool that uh, will enable those pop-ups. Everything else here should be fine. I'm just going to add a quick item. We'll do this surface. Again, another pop-up note telling me to sell that keyboard and mouse with it. We'll just do Dallas as the location. We'll sell two of them. And this should be all good to go. I think I've got some dimensions defaulting there. That's perfect. And all you have to do is click post it. Again, nothing I did there relates to my tool, David's tool, anybody's tools there, right? That's all out of box business central. But the beauty of it, if I pull this over, you know, let's say I don't want to view it, that's fine. I got a couple different things going on, so we'll we'll give it a second here. But first is a sales order shipment notice. So this is an internal notification coming from that advanced notifications tool I talked about. Uh, you could click the link and open the page in there directly. And let's see if it sent, might not have changed that email there. All right, let's give it one more second. There we go. All right, now I got the uh, invoice, right? So thanks for being a valued client. Please find your invoice, 2,600 bucks. I don't think I've customized this in, uh, in my system. It's just the old ugly uh, BC out of box uh, invoice. So I definitely recommend updating that if you're gonna be using this in production, but that's just that RDLC 1306 report there. Um, but again, without, really doing anything from an invoice and statement delivery standpoint, we got that invoice directly in our inbox. So that's option one. Option two is if you don't have that on or you just need to send them again or something like that, we've got a dashboard, right? We've got a dashboard for everything it seems. And with the invoice and statement delivery dashboard here, we can see the last time everything was sent, who sent it, the date and timestamp it was sent. If you wanna click into that document, I can click into that posted document here. Again, it's going to show us that uh, surface for two. We've got the notifications, all that good stuff. And if you need to send it again, you can just simply send it. Now, if you want to batch send, it's as easy as just selecting, you know, three or four of these and clicking send again, right? So quickly there, it's going through, it's going boom, 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 sending everything. That one must have been sent, uh, trying to send it again. All right, there we go. We should have a few emails coming in here now. We'll give it a second. I love to show the, the live demo and pop right back into that that email. You know, again, give it some time. Uh, it's got a got a send there, but you'll also notice this one's a little bit different, right? This is consolidated. We've got options on the customer card. Do you want to send them one invoice per uh, you know email, or do you want to send all the invoices on the same email, right? Some people don't want to get ten emails if they have ten invoices. So this way, I can send them just by selecting all on that dashboard. Now it's going to send one invoice, and it's just going to give you a grid of all of it. I think this Dallas trading company just had one. So again, it's just going to send one because there was only one. There was no there was no grid there. All right, let's come back into Business Central. The third option is a job queue. Tough to demo just because you put it on a schedule. But if you know how job queues work, right? Schedule it. It'll send out every five minutes, every hour, every day, whatever you want there. Um, but again, full visibility into those timestamps and all that good stuff. And uh, statements is going to... I only have a about 10 minutes or so left. So I'll just show a statement real quick, but similar methodology here. I would just select the statement, send, send, uh, selected, click yes. It's running through all that. Looks like there should be more questions coming in. I'll answer those in a second. But the beauty of those statements, we'll wait for a second to come into my email here, 
is that it's also going to include all of those attachments. So we'll give it a second there. Uh, was there another question? I saw one pop up, maybe not. Oh, there's a ton of questions actually. Um, David, you, <laughs> I, I must have clicked on one because I wasn't seeing them. But um, if you want to read some of those questions off while I go through this, this is that statement yeah, report. We've got a couple um, that are more your related for you and some are for me. But uh, for you, one is does the Business Central toolbox include um, other non AR related tools? Yes, it does. So I was just showing that statement real quick. But if you go out to the bctoolbox.com, uh, we've got about 32 different tools. Um, there's a few that relate to AR, but we've got things, for, you know, on a payment side, we've got prepayments and stuff like that. We've got, you know, a CRM tool, we've got dashboards, we've got auto vendor remittances, we've got work orders, and project management, uh, expense sheets, rentals, uh, commissions is a newer one that's been really popular lately. So we got a slew of different things. Uh, it would take me hours to go over the, all of them on a demo. So I would highly mm -hmm. recommend checking them out for yourself and, and shoot me over. Yeah, let me, let me answer a couple on my end. What payment methods does Paystand support? Again, it's um, ACH, uh, B2B network and credit cards. Uh, uh, there's also a, a thing about, uh, we talked about decreasing transaction fees. Is there a way to track that? Um, and I think that's a good segue into the financial dashboard. Yeah, good call. Um, so yes, there is. Um, first, I'm just, I, my favorite is this AR view. So if you're in Business Central already live, you'll know the AR view that they give you out of box isn't uh, too spectacular. This is going to give you some more flexibility. If you want to see like what's in this bucket, I can click it and it will actually pop open the transactions that uh, that consists of. I can see my customers over here, high to low, and then down at the bottom, I can see kind of my traditional aging. We also add in this average paydays. Think of this as day sales outstanding per customer. We'll flag them as a late payer if their average paydays is greater than their payment terms. So in this case, you know, 50 versus 30, you know, if they're a late payer down here, they're paying in 28 days on average and they're 30, so we're not gonna highlight them. And then you can see all your buckets out here to the right. Uh, one of the other key pieces for day sales outstanding is part of our KPI dashboard. And we actually have a KPI specifically for that. So typically when implementing pay stand, I recommend that um, you come out here, look at your day sales outstanding and set a goal, right? If it's, if it's proven to be 62% more um, timely, take whatever your actual is today, you know, apply that 62%, put that as the goal and then start tracking towards that goal, right? And then from a banking fee standpoint, I always just set up a mini kind of income statement, right? With those bank fees. And I can see, hey, what were my old bank fees with my old provider? And what are my new pay, uh, pay stand fees with the pay stand provider, right? They're much more uh, consistent, right? Because there's only maybe minimal fees if, if you're collecting a credit card, let's say. If you're paying bank to bank, there's no fees. If you're doing a credit card they're, and you're collecting a convenience fee, there might be small difference between American Express. So you got to pay a buck or two on. But overall, I see that trending downwards, right? So the financial dashboard can now help you do those things. Um, I saw another question about, do you pay for the two hours setup time? There's exactly. a separate charge. Yeah, we just, it's on our website. So when you're out there, you can pay for the, the tool. So invoice and statement delivery is 1200 bucks a year. Financial dashboard 600 and that's unlimited users. Um, and then if you wanted us to implement, there's a button there where you can select the two additional hours. Now, it looks like all those questions are answered. Um, how are you doing on the demo? I, I'd love to make sure we give Jeremy some time. Yeah, I could talk all day, so I'm gonna cut myself off uh, to give Jeremy some time, but let's uh, let's kill the demo here and pop back open. And uh, wanted to introduce uh, Jeremy Lamb over at Concept Agritech. It's a client that we've been working with for a while, um, always looking to, to improve their processes. So when Jeremy started talking to me about AR and cash collections and stuff like that, it was just kind of a natural uh, inkling to introduce him to David. And we started all working together. And Jeremy, really appreciate having you here today and would love to hear kind of how your experience has been. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Uh, so yeah, as he said, um, with Concept Agritech, I started here um, earlier in the year in January. Um, and uh, really just my goal coming in was to make as many of our processes in Business Central as efficient as possible. So um, pretty soon after I started, I got introduced to Ben and we started working through his, um, his BC toolbox and kind of, we had the BC toolbox, but we hadn't started utilizing all the tools. So 
we've kind of just been going through each one. And uh, when we got to AR, we started doing the invoice and statement delivery. And uh, I started talking about how we wanted to get people to be able to pay with credit cards and um, digitally because we're, we're operating uh, in 31 different states right now. And um, as you guys probably know, like the, the physical mail, getting checks in that way, um, it's not very reliable. There's no way to know if the customer received their statement or um, by the time they get their statement, if things have changed. Um, so finding a digital a digital solution was kind of a must for us. So um, Ben introduced us to the Pay Stand group. Um, and both of those implementations went extremely fast. Um, I think from underwriting to um, our first live payment was right at a month. And um, it happened, um, I think, a couple of days after we went live. We turned it on. I didn't even do anything besides set up a payment plan. And then um, just got an email that said somebody paid. I didn't, you know, we didn't have to even start advertising it yet at that point. And uh, it was intuitive enough for people to figure out. So uh, I was really impressed with the uh, just the whole process and how easy it was. So um, I think the dashboards and all that are great. Um, so it's easy enough to, for the customer to figure out. But if you have customers like we work in, um, fertilizer manufacturing. So we're working with a lot of farmers. So they're probably the, the latest adopters when it comes to technology and certain parts, um, especially financial. So um, the fact that they're able to figure it out was pretty impressive. And then you also have the ability with the dashboard to go in and walk the customer through it if they're on the phone, which is also helpful. So um, really, regardless of how tech savvy or um, comfortable your customers are with paying digitally, um, there's a way to, to walk them through it or them do it themselves. Um, but yeah, it's uh, so far it's been it's been great. Awesome, thank you so much, Jeremy. Yeah, anything uh, anything else there you wanted to touch on, or David, that you wanted to? I I just love the customer adoption piece because that's something yeah. that people always ask, and it's funny we uh, I love the fact using the farmer as an example. You know, the, the, you know they, they're pretty technical. Some of that equipment out there is pretty technical now, but like fat fingering a payment or doing something, you know, getting that payment done as easily as you ex described is, is an awesome use case because that does come up a lot. How do we get customers to adopt? Do they adopt? And I love the fact that you're like, I turned on Business Center and I got notified someone paid. Uh, pretty, pretty great story there, Jeremy. Yeah, one other thing I just thought about too. Um... So the other big thing now um, that's coming up a lot, um, I was at a retail client before and uh, PCI compliance, which is just um, compliance with managing customer um, credit card data is becoming a real hot topic. Um, and that's also something that's great about Paystand is they'll store all the credit card information on their end. So none of the PCI compliance is on um, the business itself, which is great. And um, that also, you know, gives the customer some peace of mind that they don't have to give us their credit card information or their bank information. Um, I can send them a, a request to enter it and then I don't ever have to know, you know, their routing number, their account number, their credit card number. I don't have to know any of that, which is also helpful in getting clients to adopt. Well, that's, that's awesome. I love that because I do know there are other solutions that store that information differently. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Paystand takes that PCI compliance completely off for you as the merchant. Um, definitely a secure, trustworthy solution. So thank you so much. I really love the story. And we appreciate your business and, and uh, looking forward to growing with you as your business grows and your costs don't increase. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, awesome. thank you guys. yeah, thank you so much, Jeremy. Appreciate having you on. All right, David. Well, I know we only got a few minutes left, so we can fly through this. Uh, we already kind of talked about this. There's a question in there. What else do we have, right? So this is kind of our greatest hits, right? Not only do we have AR automation, we got dashboards, we got some other kind of uh, industry-specific or function-specific uh, tools like our CRM, our project management, um, prepayments, some of that other stuff we talked about. So a lot of cool stuff out there on the on the BC toolbox and kind of 
uh, I'll drop these in the chat, but resources, right? We got our product page that I showed. We got app source where you can download free trials. We got summary screenshots, setup guides. If you want to do it yourself, we've got about 80 videos on our YouTube channel of, of different things like these recordings versus tutorials and stuff like that. We've also got a product guide that gives you a fit gap of every single product, how long it'll take to implement, uh, and as well as some quick wins that you can get with those products. So what are the next steps? Uh, if you got your phone and you're still with us here, I know we're right at time. Uh, take a look at these two QR codes, right? On the left side, you're going to have the Business Central Toolbox free trial. Uh, this is going to take you and allow you to download any of our apps, generate that demo key, and you can use the full version for up to 30 days before needing to decide if you want to purchase or not, right? So left-hand side of the screen, that's what you're going to be focused on there. And then David on the right-hand side of the screen, if you scan that uh, and you want a more personalized demo, you can scan that QR code. That'll link you over to David and his team. We'll get you a full-blown demo if you want to dive into anything deeper. And he's generous enough uh, to give you a gift card there. So, you know, make some money while you're doing it. No, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Really appreciate it. I know we're just over time, but uh, really appreciate those that hung through. And uh, if you're watching this in replay mode, uh, thank you for downloading and rewatching. And we really appreciate it. And again, I just want to say, Ben, I love our partnership. Uh, we, you know, peanut butter and jelly, we, we operate so well together. Uh, it's fun to see this. And, and again, Jeremy, thank you so much for um, your time today. Really appreciate it. Uh, everything today. It's been a great day. Absolutely. Yeah. Really appreciate both of you and everybody who joined today. Look forward to talking to everybody soon and feel free to shoot us some questions if you think of anything in the next few days on PayStand or the PC Toolbox.